Hello Gators, this is 10-2, day one, lines tangent to a circle. I can use properties of tangent lines to solve problems. Let's take a look at some algebra review, uh, squaring a binomial. When we square a binomial, that means we're multiplying the binomial to itself, and then we can use FOIL to figure out the rest of the answer and get a trinomial. Let me go ahead and demonstrate right here. Um, so I'm going to write it out twice, x plus 9, x plus 9, and then I'm going to use, uh, first I'm going to multiply these two, and so that'll be x squared, and I'm going to multiply the outer, which is plus 9x, and then I'm going to multiply the inner, which is plus 9x, and then I'm going to multiply the last, which is plus 81. And the two terms in the middle are what we call like terms. So we can add them up together and that'll be 18x plus 81. Let's do it again over here. We're gonna write it out twice. And I'm going to multiply my uh, first, which is x squared, my outer, which is plus 4x, my inner, which is plus 4x, and my last, which is plus 16. So this will be 8x plus 16. All right, let's talk about circles. And circles have some familiar words. Radius, from the center to the circle. Diameter, from a one end of the circle to another through the center. Uh, the word congruent uh, circles is when the two circles have the same radius, so that when you have a transformation, one will map onto the other. Um, so uh, a radius can be described in segments, and uh, we can use, um, for the radii, we can say segment QR, QP, or QS for circle Q. And um, a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So uh, this is a chord. Uh, P, uh, segment PR is also a chord, but we have a special name for this chord. When it goes through the center, it's called a diameter. A line that intersects the circle twice is called a secant, and a line that intersects the circle only once is called a tangent. And tangent is what we're going to be working on right now. Let's talk about what a tangent is and the relationship uh, it, with a circle. So here's a tangent, and it is intersecting the circle at one point, which is called the point of tangency. The very interesting thing about uh, uh, the line to a tangent is that this is the shortest path. It has to be the shortest path, because any path to the line over here would go past the circle and have some space in here. So the shortest path would be here. Uh, you can see we won't get, get outside the circle at all. We'll end up just hitting the tip of the circle. So this path right here that I'm going to outline right here is the shortest path. And if it's the shortest path, it will be perpendicular. And that's what the next theorem says. The next theorem says that if something is tangent, so if we call this officially tangent, it has to be the shortest path. Therefore, it has to be perpendicular. So that's what we're saying here. It has to be perpendicular. Now, the converse is also true. If you see something that's perpendicular, then you can call it tangent. All right, let's go ahead and work on this theorem right now. Let's take a look at this. I can see a perpendicular, so I know this is called a tangent. And um, with this perpendicular, I can now use the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. So I could go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, c will be this long side right here. So this will be r squared plus 24 squared equals, now be careful with the uh, hypotenuse, it's going to be r plus 16 squared. Now this is going to be r squared plus, and we want uh, 24 squared and 24 squared is 576. 
Now this is where we get to use what we were doing a few minutes ago. We're going to make this double. You make that two of them so we know we're going to have an R squared. We're going to have the outer which is 16R, the inner which is 16R, and then the last which is 16 squared which is 256. So now we have R squared plus 576 equals R squared plus 32R plus 256. I'm going to subtract R squared on both sides. And when I do that, I don't have any more R squares. They go away. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 256 from 576. And I'm going to get 320 equals 32R. Divide both sides by 32. And the answer is 10. So this would have to be 10. This would be 10, which would make this whole um, hypotenuse 26. And I hope you recognize that. That is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So we do know that is a right triangle. Let's try again. All right, again, uh, we know this is called a tangent because that line is perpendicular at the end point of the radius, so that's a tangent. And we're going to be able to use um, the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to get be able to say r squared plus 9 squared is equal to r plus 6 squared. And if you just want to write r plus 6, r plus 6, because that's what square means, go ahead and do that. r squared plus 81 is equal to r squared plus, and the outer and the inner are going to make 12r plus 36. I can subtract r squared on both sides, and then I can subtract 36 from both sides, and that'll be 45 equals 12r, and then r will be equal to 45 divided by 12 Let's see, uh, 3 goes into that one 15 times, and 3 goes into that one 4 times. So there's our radius, or you can make it a decimal if you wish. All right, let's, tell, let's decide whether uh, this is a tangent or not. The only way this would be a tangent is if this were a right angle. So what we have to decide is, is 3, 4, 5 uh, a right triangle? And the answer is yes. It's one of our famous triples. So um, uh, this is a tangent. Uh, this is a tangent because uh, AC is perpendicular to AB. We found a right angle so we know we have perpendicular lines. All right, let's go ahead and decide if this is going to happen. So what we're deciding is 9, 15, 18. Is that a, a, a right triangle? <coughs> and so what I'll do is I'll write C squared, A squared plus B squared, and see if we do have some things that are equal to each other. And 18 is three hundred and twenty-four. And this is eighty-one. And fifteen squared is two twenty-five. And we can clearly see this is not equal to each other. So no. Uh, we can see that A B is not perpendicular to uh, BC. If we don't have a right angle, we don't have perpendicular lines. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can do this problem. It uses uh, the, the theorem in, in two different directions. So the question is, is this a tangent? And the only way this would be a tangent is if we had a right angle. So I have two angles. 
I'm going to take 180 degrees and subtract 58 and 33 and I'm going to get 89 degrees for this one. So all three of these add up to 180 and so the answer is no um, because N M is not perpendicular to MP. I didn't, I didn't get a right angle um, so I don't have perpendicular. Now let's, uh, we know this is a tangent and when you say this is a tangent, you can automatically say, hey, this is a right angle. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find that third side. Now this is a nine, 12, and we're looking for the hypotenuse right here. So uh, this would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we know opposite the right angle is what we're looking for. So this is nine squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So c will be equal to the square root of, and we're gonna take 81 plus 144, and that's 225, and 225 is the number 15. So that's how long this is. Now, another way to have done this is to recognize this is a three, four, five triangle. So you could have just times this by three to get the nine, this by three to get the 12, and then you didn't have to go through all that work. We could have just said 15 by using the three, four, five triangle. And so here's the uh, summary. We are uh, working with tangents of a circle and understand what the relationship is with a tangent to the radius.